Hello to all the subscribers and uh, welcome back everyone that's been there. Let's just get right to it, shall we? Uh, yeah, 2666, a novel by Roberto Olano, a Chilean writer. He was uh, a very interesting writer. He had a very interesting and tumultuous uh, literary career, let's say. So, what is 2666? Uh, it's made up of five different parts. Five different stories are uh, connected somehow. Uh, first, we follow a group of scholars that are obsessed with this very obscure and reclusive writer uh, called Arquimboldi, and they hear a rumor that he might be in Mexico in a town called Santa Teresa. The second part, we follow Amalfitano, uh, a scholar that is living in Santa Teresa, who is very worried about his safety and the safety of his daughter because of the murders that are going on in the city. The third part is about Oscar Fate, an African-American journalist who is on assignment in Mexico, but he decides to instead follow the story of the murders. The fourth part, we finally get into the narrative of the murders. Uh, we follow this group of cops and people that are connected to the murders. The fifth and final part, is when we actually get to see uh, Ankin Boldi, the reclusive writer of the first part. And uh, we see him grow up and uh, become a writer and, and how it all connects to the previous stories. I finished it, I think, about a month and a half ago. And uh, I mean, I, I haven't been able to stop thinking about this book. I have read a couple of other really good books since then, but it's the only one that has stuck with me like this. Like nothing else I've read has been like this. And uh, it's, it's, it's very powerful. It's just very dark and it'll leave a mark. I always hear people's opinion online and here on BookTube that it intimidates them and I don't think it's because only because of its size it's like a thousand eighty two pages or something like that I think it's more of like the bad reputation it gets because it tends to be like I said very dark and has some really gory moments especially its fourth chapter which is sort of like a controversial uh, chapter because it deals with the murders of women in Santa Teresa. And Bolaño, the way he describes the murders, or at least the victims, he does it in a very cold and calculated, very almost like a forensic report. And it's such a staggering amount uh, of murders that it, it can get overwhelming because sometimes Bolaño would diverge into like the stories and lives of the women and their stories will be so good. These these little snippets of their lives will actually be so good that the, they actually deserve like a very like a book of their own almost. Uh, he builds like these incredible settings and even though the stories last like two, three pages you get attached to these characters and when they get taken away because they die you barely have any room to breathe when he starts the whole process again it's really tough it was really tough getting through this chapter uh, because the murders just kept on coming one after the other one after the other and it does so for the almost the entire part it's just relentless and I understand how some people might get turned off by that but I think this is a very important part of the book to read uh, I've heard of people skipping this chapter even like quitting the book because of this chapter but it's super important to read because this stuff while it might be ugly you know it happens it highlights not only the corruption of the politicians and, and the police force in Mexico 
but like their indifference to not only the women dying, but every other fucked up thing that's going on in Mexico at the moment. The first and fifth part were, I think, the ones that I liked the most. In the first, we see, you know, the, the growth of the characters of the scholars, how uh, they come to find his work, find the, the German writer's work and how they, how that work becomes part of their lives and how it affects them. And it sort of mirrors how, you know, readers get into works and how we get obsessed. And it, it hit me pretty hard after I finished the novel because I went out and bought like a bunch of his other work and I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. It's, it's really good. The only thing I've read from him before this was some of his poetry. But now I have like, I guess, almost his entire work, which is crazy. I've never done that. I've never just gone out and bought the entire uh, catalog of a writer. I mean, I'm, I am missing a few, but anyways. In the fifth and final part, we get this long European coming of age epic story of uh, Archimboldi, the German writer. Something very interesting about the final chapter was that it started off with like a very magical realism twist right at the beginning and throughout the throughout the narrative it got more grounded, sort of more realistic. It kind of felt like the narrator was born at the same time as Archimboldi, but he was already conscious, so he was just narrating the world around him, around Archimboldi's life as they grew up. And as they grew up, the narrator and Archimboldi, they sort of saw the world in a different way, which I thought was great how Bolaño did that. On the surface, 2666 is a bad thriller because Bolaño died before its completion, so some of the threads are not tied up, but you see so many incredible events and characters, and they're written in such a way that, you know, it doesn't need a little bow to tie it up really nicely. Um, it, I think it's beyond that. I think it's beyond conventional storytelling. It's beyond character, uh, beyond cliche characters. It explores a, an entire spectrum of human condition. You know, love, lust, obsession, apathy. I, I can go on, really. There's so many things that this book talks about. But I guess all I have left to say is that it's a fucking masterpiece, and you, if you're brave enough, you should read it.